vision than 2020. You know, 2020 is just normal vision. If you want to remain in a normal, go ahead and we believe God for a 2020 vision. You go ahead. But man, when we go and we did the research, and she, she's the one who encouraged me to do it. Man, and I saw it was 2010, 2015, 25. Man, even better than 2020 vision. Amen. 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 So I encourage you to stop being each year this year. Yes. Stop going over what's so good this year. Amen. 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 And you went after God. This word. Get into the word. Yes. Believe the yes. word. Believe what God said. Yes. Amen. That's the only thing we're going to get excited for this year. The word if it ain't the word, I don't want it. Amen. If it's just right. so good, I don't want it. Amen. I want truth. Yes. Amen. I don't want facts. Because we learn facts can be changed. We want truth. Amen. Because truth cannot be changed. And the truth is the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. 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 So we're going to be starting off our first men's fellowship. Yes. A long time waiting, but I believe God is saying now is the time. The woman, the woman did a great job last year. They were very consistent. They took care of business. Now, men, you just gotta step in and do what God calls us to do. Just trust God. God is gonna use a faithful few to go. Amen. 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 It's gonna be called men of vision. Because this year we're going to receive the vision that God has for us this year. Amen. We're going to make sure we write down the vision and we make it clear. Amen. And we're going to declare that. This is our year of declaring. Hallelujah. 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 Turn with me tomorrow. Hallelujah. Now, in, in Matthew 10, we learn that Jesus is going to Mark, uh, Mark 14. So in Matthew 10, we learn that Jesus called all of his disciples. And this is where he gave them all power. Now, power to cast out demons, power to, to manifest his glory. Now, before that, Jesus was doing miracle signs and wonders with his disciples. But now, Jesus felt it was time to impart in them to send them up. Let them go out there and test the water. Yes. Let them go out there by faith and stretch their faith. Amen. This is in Matthew 10. Now, we were having a discussion and we never saw where his disciples, while Jesus was performing a miracle, we never saw where his disciples say, hey, Jesus, I'm struggling with that too. Give me some of that here too. We never saw the disciples who was walking and learning from Jesus, they wasn't there with that spirit, like, what am I getting from this? You know, we went to um, to serve the mothers last year. And, you know, when we were getting ready to leave, and I came downstairs, I saw people drinking and eating food, and, and that thing hurt my heart. Because if we came to serve, we can't take away, that might be somebody, we got to think of, man, I'm taking away from somebody who might need it. I should have came prepared as a disciple. I should have came well equipped. Know what I'm coming to do is to serve. Yeah. We got to get out of this mindset where I'm, I, I need. I need to be served. We all need to be served. Okay, I understand it. But when it comes to Jesus and how he taught them, he taught them like, come on. Humility. Yes, yes. Then that was, hey, Peter. Struggle with anger. He was never there like Jesus. I need deliverance from this anger. Amen. You see, 
Jesus is unique and strategic in how he did things. Yes. He was the only one fit and qualified to do ministry by himself. But he went and he called 12 unfit, unequipped men. He didn't come and look for the TV Jakes of this time. He didn't come and look for the Pastor Joe Austin. He didn't come and look for the big name, the one who, who have the track record of being holy. No. He came for the you and me, the broken one who, who, who gave up on God. You know what I'm saying? Man, look, I've been wrapped up in anger so long. I don't think there's a way out for me. This is, I'm good. This is me. Some of us, how many of us got these certain things that we used to do and so much that we just say, you know, this is me, it's been in my family for so long, we just accept it. Yeah, amen. Even with some diseases. My God, come on The doctor said my great grandfather, my great grandmother died from this, so all of a sudden in my mind, I accept it. Yes, I love Christian. I mean, But Jesus knew the reason why he was choosing broken. Men. Because who else would be able to pray for broken people? My God. My God. Yeah. Understand. Yes. Understand. <laughs> when we touch and agree, we will truly be able to touch and agree because, man, I know what it is like to struggle with this. Yes. And I truly want you to be delivered from this. You know, I told, I shared with the church that deviation from sin is not truly deliverance. Amen. And the reason why I could have shared that with you is because I am a witness of it. Yes. I, I have to tell myself, no, this is a thirst. Yes. This is a thirst I have. And just because I don't take this route, that thirst is still there. So I need to confront this thing and say, hey, where did you come from? Amen, amen. You don't live here anymore. Amen. When we're weak, we gotta understand that he is strong. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 2020 is my year of deliverance. Amen. Amen. Right. Tell your neighbor, 2020 is my year of deliverance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let's read Mark. First and only lady, well, only look for my, my overseer. Amen. My first, my only first lady. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Mark 14. First. Let's start from you. Praise God. Mark 14. Mm -hmm. And being in Bethany, in the house of Simon, the leper, he sat at meat. There came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment of Sparnard, very precious. And she broke the box and poured it on her head. And there were some that had indignation within themselves. There was some. Now we learned what the alabaster box was. Mm -hmm. This is what parents back in the day, they'll give it to their daughters to show how much they value their daughter. For when the husband show up at the door, She'll break him at the husband's feet, the potential husband, to let him know how much I am worth. So women, you need to know your value. You need to go check your alabaster box and make sure that there is value in your cup, in your box. Amen? So, continue. And there were some that had an issue within themselves and said, why was this waste of the money in me? For it might have been sold for more than 300 pence and have been given to the poor, and they murmured against her. Now, this is a group murmured, they upset because of what this young lady just did. She wasn't looking for a husband. We learned that a couple weeks ago. She just valued Jesus because of what Jesus did for her. He delivered her. So she valued that deliverance so much that she realized that her life is no longer her own. Amen. She wanted to show God, man, I'll give you my best that I have to offer because I realize you've given me your best when you even came to give me your best. Amen? Amen. 
she had a personal conviction to go after Jesus, find where he is, and give him the best that she had to offer. Amen. So there was a group. It wasn't just one person who, who got upset with what she did. Could you imagine a group sitting there? Man, look at this finish list. This thing could have been spent. We could have fed so much people. We want to get so self-righteous without answer to. And we, we don't even understand that we sow seeds. They look like right. there's a way that seems right, but in the end it's destruction. So it looked like it's okay. And oh, man, why she wastes this thing up? Man. Let's, let's continue. Hallelujah. Hold on, she's still doing it? And Jesus said, let her alone. Why trouble ye her? She hath wrought a good work for me. For ye have the poor with you always. And whensoever ye will, ye may do them good. But me ye have not always. She hath done what she could. She has come aforehand to anoint my body to the burying. Verily I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also that she hath done shall be spoken of for a memorial of her. Now, Jesus just put a song on what she did. He said, for the entire, I don't care where this gospel is going to be spoken, I'm going to make sure that this is known what she has done. Yes. She prepared my body for burial. Yes. Uh -huh. She prepared my body. Something that, man, the disciples who was walking with him didn't even know, didn't even recognize, man, this is needed. Sometimes we look at the lot. Oh, church folks will be the one to bless us or to help us. But but it'll be the people who we least expect. Yes, yes. I remember my wife and I. We went to um, I think it was with Dixie, we went to grocery store. And we had no money. But I believe by faith. I said, babe, let's go to Dixie. We got a shopping cart. We were walking down the aisles and we shopping. Whatever we need. Hmm? Whatever we needed, we took it and put it in that car. We got a line. <laughs> we got a line. Yeah, he of little faith. But just make sure when you go believing, you better stand firm in what you believe. Because she was with me, but in her heart, she truly didn't believe. Me. She wasn't ready for that type of faith. Amen? So, whatever we needed, we put it in there. You got a line. And then I'm there like, God, I'm just talking to my dad. I don't know what my dad will do, but I'm trusting my dad. And this lady in front of us, she said, you know, how much your stuff costs? Whatever it costs, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cover it. Amen. I'm going to pay for it. Amen. Now, Because if God was supposed to find a come and see us in it, at least 
He's looking for faith here on earth. That's what the word said. He's coming back looking for faith here on earth. Why not catch us in the act of practicing faith? Putting our faith in the work. Hallelujah. So remember, he spoke to a group of them. A group of them was upset. So he rebuked all of them and tell them, no, what she's doing is a good thing. Let's continue. Verily I say unto you, Wheresoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also that she hath done shall be spoken of for a memorial of her. And Judas Iscarot, one of the twelve, went unto the chief priests to betray him unto them. And when they heard it, they were glad and promised to give him money. And he sought how he might yeah. conveniently Talk betray him. Them. Right there. And the first day of unleavened bread. Okay. You can pause right there. So now Jesus rebuked. But Judas Wait, was wrong. Oh. Who rose up from that rebuke? Because the thing is, not a lot of us are okay with rebuke. Amen. But we'll tell how much you're delivered yes. by how you respond to the rebuke. There was a group that he spoke to. There was a group of them who they, 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 what's that word? They aspired. They, there was a group of them who came together and said, hey, what she's doing is wrong. Yes. Jesus said, hold up, hold up, hold up. And he rebuked the crowd. Yes, Only one from the crowd took that rebuke the wrong way. Yes. Offense came. Yes. But the Bible said offense will come. Amen. So it's okay if you get offended, but it's how you handle it will show your maturity in Christian love. Yes. When offense comes, it's not for you to go and start sowing seeds behind the person back. Oh, no. When offense comes, it's not, it's not a, a door for you to feel like I'm right, and you walk around and you make this person feel like they're less than. Yes, come on. So Judas decided to go and betray Jesus. H was the because he didn't handle the rebuke. He's a part of the same church. He's walking with the same 12. He got the same teaching, the same lesson, even in Mark, in, in Matthew 10. Jesus gave them all power. He never said Judas didn't get any. He gave it all to them. That's the God we serve. He gave it to you and see what you're going to do with it. Because if I truly want to be delivered, I need to first know that I am sick. <laughs> if I want to be delivered, I need to know that hold up, I am sick. You see, a lot of us want to play doctor for each other. Come on now. Come on now. Man, ain't it a good thing when we can see a more call it discernment? That's right. I see my neighbor, I see what's going on with my neighbor face. And then I want to look up scripture for that neighbor. I want to go to God and pray and pray against that neighbor. Let me tell you, I'm, I'm so real with it. One time, I remember where we're coming from, long time ago, had this church, right? And every time we go to this church, every Sunday is about a witch. And the witch is going to die. And, the witch is, and don't let it smell some kind of oil fragrance. Yes, that's the witch. And all. Look at every Sunday. I got so sick and tired. I said, hey, I'm the witch. <laughs> Just so we could. Hey, I'll repent and keep it moving. Let's move on to something new. You see, I'm delivered. I'm set free. But I just want to see the people of God set free also. We can't come to the same thing, the same, and see the same people get delivered. No hope, no movement, and be okay with it. You see, church is not a place for us to get comfortable. If every time you're comfortable here, yeah, please come to me. We'll have a one-on-one, -on -one, and I need to go back to the cross. Amen. This is not made for you to be comfortable. This is not made for you to come and get motivated to build your own kingdom. No. Amen. Salvation is a serious thing. Amen. Jesus went to the cross, and he didn't say, hey, all things will be good. That's a lie. 
He said, pick up your cross. But yes. I look at the cross, there's nothing pretty about that cross. He was dirty. He was bruised. He had holes in his, in his ribs, in his hands. There was nothing pretty about that cross. So I don't know who I trust that you was that when we come to Christian, Christian though, everything will be made perfect. Everything. He said, I want you to prosper like your soul prosper. We don't even worry about the soul now. We don't even ask ourselves, hey, man, soul check. Are you prospering? It's a new year, right? How many of us start the new year with even a prayer? With, with, with even a little seat than what we had last year. But sometimes we want to stay in the same familiar place, expecting a different result when it comes to kingdom. But God's kingdom is a moving kingdom. If you're stagnant, that means you're stagnant. It's the same God across the board. You know, if we meet people from other churches when we go out and evangelize, I always tell Let's encourage each other. Keep the faith. We're not looking for skill members. I always wonder why would a church throw a big thing on a Sunday where they all these big celebrities. Why are you trying to get people to leave positions to go? That's right. Yeah. When somebody leaves their position, now it's unbalanced. We're supposed to be carrying away. When you're planted, my wife was preaching about a movie on, on, on Watch Life Service. When you're planted, there's a difference between being potted and planted. So, why is it that we feel so okay? Like when it comes to the kingdom, do you tell your child, hey, I'm going to go check out this other job over here. Uh, I ain't coming to work today. Like, you will get fired. Yeah, Even if it's a sick day, you better pretend you're sick. Hey, I, I, I don't feel good today. <laughs> sure. But you, you dare not call your job and say, hey, I want to go check out this job over here. That's right. But when it comes to the kingdom, well, we did because of Jesus. Yes. Oh, so because of Jesus, and he's so crazy that I love his shirt. You know that little hippie. We want to paint Jesus like some little hippie, like, no, no, that wasn't Jesus. What the image that they painted in all these Jesus movies, that's not Jesus. Jesus was very strong and bold. That's right. He stood up for truth. He, he even told the, the Pharisees that he put them in their place. He wasn't afraid to rip them out of the You think this little hippie Jesus will come and rip somebody out of the temple? Verse 27. But Jesus, but Jesus said unto her, Let the children first be filled, for it is not meet to take the children's bread and cast it unto the dogs. Look, Mark 8, 27. When he said, okay. And Jesus went out and his disciples into the towns of Cades, Are, of Philippi. And by the way, he asked his disciples, saying unto them, Who do men say that I am? And they answered, John the Baptist, but some say Elias, and others one of the prophets. And he said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Peter answered and said unto 
and after three days arise again. And he spake that saying openly. And Peter took him and began to rebuke him. So Peter will take the Savior <laughs> and begin to rebuke him. Let's go ahead, continue. But when he had turned about and looked on his disciples, he rebuked Peter, saying, Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but the things that be of men. And when he had called the people unto him with his disciples, also he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself. Deny himself. And take up his cross. And pick up your cross. And follow me. And follow him. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. Wow. For what? For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Whosoever, therefore, shall be ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Can you see how we made a mistake and we had it happen? Yes. We think in the house, the cars, looking good, is prosperity in Christ. We go on chasing after the wrong things. It's called the spirit of mammon. It comes in and it sneaks in and it just tricks us. And then we want to call this God. But he, he just gave a description. Now you better. So do we even understand what we're saying yes to? Why did I say yes to Christ? Was it the understanding of man? I got to pick up our cross. Was it the understanding that man? This is salvation. My salvation is, 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 I'm taking it so serious that any car that I go in, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure I give him the glory. Because he just said, if, if, if you don't, if you don't talk about me in front of people, I'm gonna deny you. Because we denied him in front of our friends. We denied him in front of our, our, our family. We denied him in front of our neighbors, our co-workers. We denied him. So he said, hey, I I'm going to just deny you. My Lord. You see, we gotta, when we say yes, we got to make sure we are the light. Yes. When you put the light in a dark room, it's going to shine. Mm -hmm. We don't pick and choose when we're going to turn up or turn down the light. There's no switch for us. There's no light switch. Oh, man, what about my destiny? I don't want to lose this friendship. I heard somebody say, you know, sometimes we so deep in friendship that the person is doing so much for us, we don't want to anger the person because we don't want to lose this friendship. For instance, the person gave a scenario. What if I have a brother and I got kids, right? And, and I have a brother. And this brother decides to give me a car because he see I'm taking a bus with these kids. So this brother decided to give me a car, make it a payment, so I can be able to take my kids to school and it looked good. But then my brother's living foul. I'm a Christian. But um, I don't want to correct my brother because I don't want to lose, I don't want him to take back his car. I don't want to, I don't want him to get upset and, and, and stop making the payments on the car. Sometimes we walk into these relationships thinking we're doing a person good, but the person's blood would be on your shoulders. That means you're truly not excited about the salvation that you've received. Because if you're excited about something, you tell somebody. 
there'll be a passion, there'll be a desire in you to share the good news. But really, truly, we probably don't even know what the good news is. What is holding you back from sharing that good news? That means I got to look back. What is stopping me from sharing this good news? Why am I not excited? I remember we talked about Wakanda, Black Panther, when we first saw it. We talked about it. Even when we didn't see it, some, person, some people just heard about it and they went and they were talking about what they heard. It was so much excitement. But man, when it comes to our salvation and this word, there's no excitement. There's no excitement to share. There's, where's, the, where's the joy? Because we're so caught up in wanting to do it our own way. We build our own kingdom and thinking we're coming close to God. But what God is about to do is start confusing us. He's going to have to do like what he did in the Tower of God. Confuse us. Because sometimes we think we're too good. We're too good for our own good. Want to build our own. Want to look good in front of people. Not knowing that we're presenting dark. Man, I was reading um, Isaiah. And from the first Lord, I probably got to probably five or six. And man, all, this, all he's talking about is, is just rebuke. Rebuke. God is so sick and tired of the, of the sacrifices. And could you imagine that's like us repenting? Because there's no more blood sacrifices. Yes. Jesus. Now we gotta present our bodies as a living sacrifice. Yes. Now repentance becomes the blood sacrifice because we understand that Jesus died for our sins. Yes. So now when we repent, that becomes a blood sacrifice. Yes. But if, if God Himself said, Man, I'm so sick and tired of these, these blood sacrifices, He's sick and tired of the repentance. My God. The same thing we're doing, expecting different results. It's the same thing. God forgive me. Lord, in my mind, I'm going right out right there. Like on New Year's, we came with a list of things. Yes. I, I was truthful on my list. But the Holy Spirit began to talk to me. Yes. There's some, 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 some places in our lives that we don't even want the Holy Ghost to touch. Because we truly came oh, down to the good God. So we want to wrap that down because and the reason why you can share this with me, when we went out to, to go minister over there, sister, this drunk, this drunk guy, he came, he's like, we were talking and we fed him and we were talking, and then he said, um, man, you know, um, I don't know, the topic just went to God. And then I said, man, you know you can get delivered? But the Holy Spirit didn't tell me to pray for him. The Holy Spirit told me to tell him to pray. This man was like, that, no, no. I said, repeat after me. And I started praying. But the prayers that I was praying, when it came to, Lord, and help me put down this addiction of alcohol, he's like, he stopped. I was like, Lord, help me put down this addiction of alcohol. He's like, I'm not ready yet. Two things I learned. He know the power of prayer. Yes. And the second thing I learned, because he was so honest, God is able to work on that heart. But me, I gotta remain praying for him. Yes. You see, it's not our place to judge. It's not our place to condemn. Yes. If God is given to me, I gotta pray different. Yes. I don't know what this You see, we think we gotta see what it is. We think it's something we be in competition trying to go out there and be like, hey, well, seal the deal. Say the shit. Send us prayer. And nah, some water, some more salt. God is always giving the increase. Why are we trying to get numbers? Why are we in competition trying to look good for camera? Thank you, Lord. 
But he spake the more vehemently, If I should die with thee, I will not deny thee in any wise. Likewise also said they all. And they came to a place which was named Gethsemane. And okay. he said, Thank you. So they all said they would not deny Christ. Peter was the only one that denied him out of his mouth. But did you see any of them there? No. They actually denied him. It says many of them. Many of them. Because Jesus had already prophesied to them, hey, a lot of y'all are going to be offended by this. Because we don't understand. What do you mean you're about to die? You're my Savior. You preach all you raising people from the dead to see you on this cross? Oh, I'm not ready to really receive that in my heart. Come on. He said, many of them, we will never deny you. And Jesus said, no, you won't deny me. Before the cop told twice, you were ready to go deny me three times. Yes. But in their actions, they all denied him. But you see, because Peter spoke it out, yes. he was able to now come to the conviction my God, my God. of the truth that God had for us. Remember I told yes. you God called broken, messed up people. Yes. Yes. Because there's something about broken, messed up people, they'll know, my God, when grace show up, yes. they'll understand. Yes. They'll understand how to deal with grace. So Peter was able to understand that God, I did the same thing I, I told you I wasn't going to do. Yes, yes, my God. So they went to a place of repentance. My God. He felt so ashamed of what he did that he didn't even feel he was worthy to be amongst the twelve. He, he took himself out. You see, some of us, it's so easy to sin and then come to church, hop on praise and worship, hop on the drums, hop on the keyboard. It's like we live a life and we add sin to it and think it's okay with God. Oh God. But can I be convicted? Can you be convicted enough to say, hey, man, man, God, you know forgive me. I've fallen short time after time. I know you didn't create me with this. You created me in your image, in your likeness. We gotta go out to the world and see what God says about us. We gotta remind ourselves so we don't be double minded. A double minded man is unstable in all his ways. There's never said some, all his ways. So we gotta stop being double minded. If I say yes, man, I'm gonna say yes to the conviction. But sometimes God is poking at us, we know it's wrong, but we just push the conviction aside. And we try to justify the conviction. We try to justify that. Well, I was talking to my wife, but at least I'm not that bad. Yes, come on. At least I'm not that deep in it. Yes. This person is so deep in it that they ended up in a mental home. At least I'm not that deep in it. But if I'm seeing that this is the same path that brought in there, why not stop now? Why not allow the conviction of God to become real to me? Just like Peter. Right now. Peter said, man, I can't even be amongst y'all right now. I don't want to taint y'all. Because he was the only one who said it out of his mouth. So the rest of them, I don't really know how you feel about this. But you, you just ran. You just showed in your action that you denied it. He was the only one that said it on his mouth. So his truth came out. So because his truth came out, now God was able to work with it. Wow. And when Jesus came back to his disciples, he's like, where's Peter? Yes. He asked for Peter. Go get Peter. Yes. And then when he, when he came to Peter, he said, do you love me? Yes. You see, because now Peter went through something with God, but he know he loved him. Yeah. 
Because of how hard he fell on his face, it built his relationship, his character, that it drove him closer to God. You think, you think the enemy could have come again and used that same thing? No. Are you going to deny? No. Are you going to deny me? No. Amen. Because of what he went through, it brings forth a conviction that brought forth transformation.